Let's start this discussion by talking about what exactly is a bond. A bond is a long-term debt instrument, or we call it a fixed income security, where the issuer or the borrower effectively is agreeing to make payments of principal and possibly interest on specific dates to the holders of the bond. And these bonds are traded in bond markets that are primarily over the counter. Um, and the people who buy and sell bonds are mostly large financial institutions. So it's a, it's a, a little bit different from the stock market, the bond market that is. And so it's a little bit more difficult to get information about specific bonds, although the Wall Street Journal does report on them. Let's talk about the key features of a bond. And so these are important definitions that you need to know. First, we have the par value or the face value. And so that is the face amount of the bond that you will get back if you, um, if you buy that bond. That's what you will get back at, a, at maturity. And so typically on a corporate bond, that's gonna be $1,000. Next, we have the coupon interest rate. Now, this is important because we have different interest rates related to bonds, and so we need you to keep them straight. The coupon interest rate, or the stated interest rate, is the interest rate that's used to figure out your periodic coupon payments. And so this amount is typically fixed, meaning it doesn't change over the life of the bond. And so the way that we figure out how much the coupon payments are going to be is we take that par value, multiply it by that coupon interest rate, and then if we want to know how much each payment is, we just divide it by the number of payments per year. So typically on a corporate bond, it makes payments semi-annually or twice a year. Next, there's the maturity date. And so that is the date when you get that principal or face value back, when the bonds have to be repaid. The issue date is just what it says, what it sounds like, when the bond was originally issued. And then the years, the yield, excuse me, the yield to maturity is the rate of return that you would earn on that bond if you held it until it actually matures. And so now what happens if your bond is called or called early. What that means, having a call provision on a bond means that the issuer could buy back those bonds or pay off those bonds early. And so why would they do that? Well, if interest rates go down. If interest rates go down, that means they could buy back their existing bonds and then reissue them at a lower, at a lower coupon rate, meaning that they would cut their interest payments potentially. And so um, if you are thinking about buying a bond, you're typically going to want a higher coupon rate if it's callable, because then that means that that stream of coupon payments isn't guaranteed. Because at some point then, if interest rates drop, the issuer could call that bond and then you're not gonna get that stream anymore. You'll get repaid, but now you've gotta go out and find another investment. Another potential feature on a bond is a sinking fund. So what's that? Well, sinking fund means that the issuer is making a provision to pay off that loan over its life rather than just waiting and paying it all off at maturity. And so that's similar to having an amortized loan because remember this is debt. So we're talking about similar animals here. And so how do investors feel about a sinking fund provision? Well, it's a good thing because it reduces the risk or the default risk on that bond because instead of having to wait to get your $1,000 10, 20, or 30 years from now, you're going to get it over time potentially. And so it's shortening the maturity of your bond. But now, kind of like the call provision, if rates drop, you might not like that because now, again, you've got to go out and find another investment at potentially a lower rate. So how do these things work? Well, what, would, what could happen is you could, the issuer could call a certain percentage of the issue at par for sinking fund purposes. And so that's likely if the cost of debt, RD, 
is below the coupon rate, which would mean then that the bond sells at a premium. Or they could buy bonds in the open market if the reverse is happening, meaning the cost of debt or the yield is above the coupon rate, so it's selling at a discount. So now we're about ready to start doing bond valuation, and so let's just start with a timeline and show you how this thing works. Um, this is a combination, a bond would be a combination of an annuity and a lump sum payment because we're going to have cash flows periodically when the bond makes its coupon payments and then we get a lump sum at maturity. So that's effectively what we're seeing here with this timeline and this generic formula. Uh, but before we get into the guts of bond valuation, let's wrap up these features. Some other features or definitions that you need to know about, um, but we're not going to do as much with as the callable features and the sinking fund features are um, a convertible bond. That would mean that the bond owner, purchaser, could exchange that bond for stock. And there would be specific um, explanations or directions on how and under what conditions that exchange could happen. Um, a warrant. A warrant would be an option to buy stock. So similar to a convertible, but um, not exactly the same in terms of how it's executed. A puttable bond. So this is also like an option, but instead of having the option to buy, this is the option to sell. Um, an income bond. This is an interesting one because in this one, the issuer only has to make those coupon payments when um, interest is earned by the firm. And so sometimes we see these if um, it's if the bond is tied to a particular project, meaning let's say a municipality puts in a toll road and they do a bond issue to raise the money for putting in that toll road. Well, they only they could specify that they only have to make the interest payments from the income that's generated by the toll road. Well, if the citizens decide that they don't want to drive that road and pay that toll, then there could be no income and that means the bondholders are out of luck. Lastly, we have an index bond, and that's where the interest rate is based on the rate of inflation. So that would be the exception to that kind of rule that we said earlier about coupon rates not changing. Uh, let's tie these bond discussions to our interest rate discussions from the previous chapter by talking about the opportunity cost. The discount rate is actually the opportunity cost of capital, and that's the rate that could be earned on alternative investments of equal risk. So this formula should look familiar to you. So we're, what we're doing is we're taking that nominal rate or nominal interest rate formula from Chapter 6 and calling it, calling it the discount rate uh, or the opportunity cost of debt capital. So now, again, setting us up for bond valuation, let's look at a 10-year, 10% annual coupon bond when the yield to maturity or the cost of debt is 10%. Well, at that point, that means that our coupon rate is equal to the yield. And remember, the yield is the return that you would earn if you held the bond until maturity. Well, in that case, the face value is equal to the price. So it's selling at par. And so you see here the calculations to prove that that's true.